So before we start this video, let me say this. I swore an oath to the Constitution of the United States of America like so many other Americans have. And I come from a long line of military veterans that have fought for the freedom of this country. I am watching the country being systematically dismantled, as well as all other westernized countries all around the world, all at the same time. But apparently, it's starting to make itself known here in the United States. I'm simply compiling and documenting everything that's going on right now and drawing my conclusions from the information that I'll be presenting. Make up your own mind, but make up your own mind fast, because the end is coming sooner than later. You've been warned. Before we get into the meat potatoes of this video, I'm going to show you a, a snippet of what politicians, the mainstream media, and Hollywood consider the most important agenda, the most important topics, the most important crisis that Americans are facing today. And yes, this is real. I want to make really is this isn't new information. This is just something that's been on the NHS website for a long time. And it's based on empirical evidence. It's not come out of nowhere. There's empirical not evidence, that's a really good saying, yeah. But they, there's not more trans women breastfeeding. Do you know how many trans women are actually breastfeeding in this country, Two or none, three. Would, none. Isn't it none? It's on line 22, after the word by, the word female. This is just about practicality. I believe that these products should be most available to those that would use them, girls. And uh, this amendment makes that more likely. Thank you, Representative Jordan. I need to vote no on this amendment um, for a few reasons. Um, practical, financial, social, emotional. Um, first, uh, there are a lot of schools that are moving towards gender neutral bathrooms. And if we add female, we might become obsolete very quickly. Um, second, not all students who menstruate are female. Um, we need to make sure that all students have access to these products. Um, there are obviously less um, non-female menstruating students, and therefore their usage will be much lower. And that was actually um, calculated into the cost of this um, and how much we decided to fund it. And so we, we do not expect that the non-female menstruating students will use um, these products as much as the, the students using female bathrooms, but it's important to have them there. Um, and that brings me to the, just the social emotional reasons for that. Um, these students who are not female, who menstruate um, face a greater stigma and barrier um, to asking for these products. And so providing them in an easily accessible place um, in all student bathrooms is particularly important for those students. Um, and lastly, I'll just mention that a lot of schools, as our testifiers have said, um, have done this already. Um, they provided it in all student bathrooms. There have not been issues. Um, and this just helps us, again, normalize conversations around the menstrual cycle and make sure that everyone feels comfortable around these products. That, that so many of us need. Thank you. All too often, I hear leaders talk about providing everyone with dignity and respect like it's an aspirational goal. That's not good enough. Dignity and respect is the bare minimum. It's the floor of where we can be. We must set our sights higher and focus on intentional inclusivity because there are still far too many people out there, not just LGBTQ individuals, that feel marginalized, shut out, or discriminated against. So I could go on with this all day long, all day, every day, forever, but I'm not going to because I want to get to the actual real problems that our country is facing. Seriously, the real problems. And it's funny how they talk about how this is, you know, they're they're discriminated against this, that, and the other thing, and yet the tiniest minority has literally has more power over the entire majority. And that's going to be a theme throughout this entire thing. If you're a bad guy and a good guy points you out, the good guy gets arrested. You see what I'm saying? That's where we're living right now, whether you want to admit it or not. So here we go. This is the meat and potatoes. Camera speed. Sound production, take one. This is a video I wish I really never had to make. But in the world we're living in right now, I cannot sit, sit here with my fingers in my ears, my mouth covered up, and my eyes shuttered closed. 
In the year 2020, the World Economic Forum put out a video on their YouTube channel called The Great Reset. And what The Great Reset basically is, is no more borders to any country. Everybody's on a digital ID system. You'll own nothing and be happy because you'll basically be leasing everything from the clothes on your body to the place where you live and not in the traditional sense. And also, they'll be tracking and tracing everybody through the digital ID system. So this is a world that is very dystopian. It's definitely not some place that any of us want to live. And yet, we're barreling right towards it right now. And nobody seems to notice whatsoever at all. And in my capacity as a YouTuber and a social media person, I run into an awful lot of people. And most normal people don't seem to understand that this is happening all around us worldwide right now it's disconcerting in 2020 when the world economic forum per first laid out this video the great reset it just seemed as a harbinger of things to come but in 2024 we're actually seeing all of this come to pass whether it's forced or organic it's very difficult to tell but here we are nonetheless so let me explain all this the best i possibly can the world economic forum came to the forefront basically when the pandemic dropped and a guy named Klaus Schwab came out and he wrote a book called The Fourth Industrial Revolution. And you can get it on Amazon in an audiobook format, Kindle or a hardcover. And you should definitely read it because these people basically want you as serfs. They will be the royalty, just like back in the old days. And everyone else will be the peasants unless they play ball. But their biggest problem is, in their opinion or in their estimation... There's way too many people on the planet, and there's a, they need to get rid of that, and they also want to get rid of borders, you know, borders between countries. How do you conquer all the nations of the world at the same time? Militarily, it's really not possible, but using fear and pandemics and economic crashes and other tactics, we're literally seeing it happening right now, like this, for instance, in the United States. We're in big trouble here. I mean, th these are two of the most dangerous gangs on the planet. They are prison spawn gangs. They, they come out of the muck and the slime of these South American prisons, which are their stronghold. They are on the lowest rung of the evolutionary ladder when it comes to organized crime. That means they're all strictly street crime, which is dangerous. They bring with them just mindless knuckle dragging violence. They kill with knives and machetes. MS-13 is well established. They're going to be the more dominant of the two gangs. They've been here for quite a while. And as you say, Dana, we knocked them down in, in the late 2000s with, a, with a, just an international effort. But now they're coming back in and they're reestablishing themselves. And that bodes ill for law enforcement across the country. We're going to be living with this crime wave for decades. And I believe that Venezuela is emptying their prisons deliberately and sending these people up here, just like Castro did in the 80s. Who in God's name needs a weapon with 100 rounds in a chamber? High capacity chambers still yet to be explained, but one of the many plausible answers is how about the guy who lives in the apartment complex that's now overtaken by the gang of Venezuelan migrants you let into this country? You know, the ones patrolling around with the assault weapons that you hate so much. So what you're seeing right here is actual LOL security footage of armed Venezuelan gang members that are literally going door to door in an apartment complex in Aurora, Colorado, taking over the entire place forcing people that live there to pay them to continue living there or assaulting, robbing, and throwing them out. These people are literally under siege and the police and government are doing nothing about it and the media is basically trying to pretend it's not even happening. Shocking, but true. Governor Jared Polis' spokesperson told the New York Post that the concern over that scene is largely just a feature of the imagination of Aurora City Councilwoman Danielle Jarinski, who's speaking to media about it. So elected officials are trying to put this out there because it's a serious issue. And the police are aware of it, but the people above them, the shot callers, are saying it's a figment of their imagination. It's not even real.
Aurora police say they are investigating, and the men in this scene are believed to be members of the Venezuelan gang Tren de Aragua. Whatever happened at this particular scene, it was not friendly. This apparent break-in was right before a shootout happened, leaving one person severely injured. And this is by no means a rare or isolated event. Denver has received the most migrants per capita of any major U.S. city. Over 40,000 of them have arrived since the end of 2022. Every time I try to upload this video thinking that I'm done, new information comes out and I'm adding it as I can. But at some point I have to release this videos. It's, it's at least 15 minutes longer than I anticipated. But Nick Shirley and his mother, Booker T, have hit the ground running out in Aurora. And this is what they found out. Is it true that Train de Aragua has came here to this area of Aurora? Sí. Por todo esto. Incluso allá arriba cerraron un apartamento. Entonces no es una mentira que los bandidos han venido. No, no. ¿Y qué está haciendo los bandidos? Pues lo que siempre robar, meterse a todos los los conjuntos, sacar cosas de los mercados, todo eso. ¿Y ha escuchado de otras personas aquí en este sector que han sido uh, extranados? No, por aquí no. Por aquí por estos lados, pero de aquel lado sí que hubo mucho eso. So she's from Venezuela. And what kind of crimes do Trained Aragua's commit in Venezuela? So people here in America can understand how dangerous they really are. Robar, matar, extorsionar, todo eso. Y quieren venir aquí a hacer lo mismo. No están en Venezuela. Para que hagan lo que hacen allá. Y, and so you believe they also want to do the same here as well? Sí, ya se ve que lo hacen. Y personas como usted y yo deberíamos estar temerosos de los miembros? Sí, porque no les importa. A ellos no le importa hacerle daño a cualquier persona. Do you feel safe walking the streets here? No. Ahora en este sector está peor que era ahí en Venezuela. Sí, está casi igual que Venezuela. Well, she's saying it's literally just about as bad in Venezuela as it is here in Aurora, Colorado, with the gang. And what would be your message to the political leaders of the United States, knowing that Tren de Araguas have arrived and they are committing egregious crimes like murder and extorting to the people? Okay, si pueden agarrarlos, mejor. Si lo and something else that Nick points out is something I've been talking about since the beginning of this entire thing is these people, the laws don't apply. They get to literally drive around in vehicles that aren't registered, that aren't insured, and they don't have licenses because they're not citizens and nothing happens to them because they're asylum seekers. A lot of the cars here also are not registered. There are no plates on a lot of these vehicles here in this parking lot. So a lot of people are driving around unregistered vehicles, which also causes a harm because the police can't track what's going down if these people are using these cars for something that is not legal. Now, as an American citizen, if you decide to drive around with no license, no registration, no insurance, and you get pulled over, you're going to jail. Period. Also, the reason I re-edited this, because Nick caught up with somebody that actually lives in this area and... He says something that actually lets me know that some people do actually realize what's really going on. Listen to what this guy has to say. Has the city done anything? Have they called on any other gangs in the city? Because we know that Denver, you know, like you said, there's a lot of gangs here. Have they called on the gang to try and come maybe fight these Venezuelan gangs? And that's the situation is that after the police didn't come in here and raid these places, if there was, so, if there was a lot of problems like there was, people started calling on the local gangs. You guys should go confront them. Like, this is your neighborhoods. When you think about it, it is, it's like, bro, they wanted people to come over here and start basically a war. Let's let's turn this up and have conflicts where they can actually have something to say, hey, it's going crazy over there. Yeah, why don't the police come in here instead of the other gangs? I, I couldn't even tell you that. That's why when I see all this stuff, why didn't the gangs, when they had the footage of the dudes with the guns, right? If it was gangbangers, like gangbangers, they would have came in here and raided the whole situation, and this place would have been flipped because Colorado, Denver, they, they put gangbangers on the terrorist list. But they seen this on the footage, and they didn't even come in here, so I don't, it's yeah, kind it of like... There hasn't been one single arrest since that video took no. place. No. And these fools had had, their, mass, their faces was uncovered. But if it was some gangbangers, they definitely going to come in here. They're going to indict the whole neighborhoods around here, you know? Mm -hmm. So do you think it could have been an inside job by the people that run the government here in Denver? Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm getting to. It, it's deeper than just in Venezuela's invading. It's like these dudes set this up. That's how I feel. It's all part of a plan. Everybody's just following orders. Everyone's just doing their jobs. Meanwhile, the result 
is showing itself and it's fairly self-evident at this point. Now this is really strange because the same people that have absolutely flooded our country with undocumented illegal aliens, people that are entering the country illegal, illegally, are being picked up, put on buses, and then sent straight out to the largest cities in the United States. And that's been going on for quite a while. And I actually went down to Texas to the Mexican border and I spoke with the border patrol and I spoke with the National Guard and they didn't have a problem with each other. The only problem was they couldn't understand why these people weren't being turned away or why they weren't being allowed to do their job as border patrol or National Guard. These migrants, these illegals, mostly men, and that's a fact, were being put on buses, given money, given hotel rooms, and given all the amenities you would expect being a United States citizen, even though they're all undocumented. And almost all of them, as soon as they reach the United States or whatever country they're invading, throw their passports away. So there's no way to know who any of them are. Where are you guys from? What country? Pakistan. Pakistan. India. India. Where are you Turkey. From? Turkey? Yeah. Turkey. Okay. India. 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 Where are you guys from? Turkey. 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 Turkey? Where are you guys from? China. China. Ecuador. Ecuador? Where are you guys from? India. 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 Iran. Iran. You're all Iran. from Iran. Yes. Why'd you come? No freedom. No, fr no freedom? Yes, in Iran. Iran is a dangerous country. Oh, that poor guy. Iran is a dangerous country. So he had to come all the way to the United States. The problem with that is there are non-governmental organizations, NGOs, that before these people illegally cross into our country over our border that nobody defends, they're coached, they're told what to say by NGOs. And that's a fact, and I will show you that exact proof very shortly. But you have to understand, notice that these are all men. Every once in a while you see a woman, but apparently it's just all military age men from all walks of life being funneled into our country. If we didn't want them here, we could stop them. It's just that easy. If any other country had a problem with Americans just nonstop crossing into their borders, coming into their countries, raping, killing, doing all sorts of illegal things while they have no idea who we are, I guarantee you the people of that country would take up arms. They would stop it. But in America, everybody's just waiting on voting on the next guy. Listen, this has been going on for a long time and it's intensified in the last several years for a reason. For a reason. So real quick, before we move on, let me explain what NGOs or non-governmental organizations are doing. Better yet, I'll have one of the British Royal Marines that went undercover with the migrant camps over in Britain explain it. Um, now, we have got a TV exclusive with a former Royal Marine. He's an author. He's called Lee West. And he went deep undercover in a migrant camp in Calais. Um, we've got a couple of clips for you. This is the start of his extraordinary story. Initially, when we got there, we were welcomed because they see a lot of people looking like us every day uh, to there to help them. So, of course, they're weighing us up. But these guys there to help us, not just with food handouts. There's a lot of people there, a lot of NGOs, no borders groups, who actually facilitate them getting across. They don't just give them handouts. They tell them, when they get to the UK, say this, say that. You, you'll remember a few years ago, there's a big influx of them saying, oh, I'm homosexual, mm -hmm. and therefore I can't go back to my country. It may not be I'm fleeing from war now, because you rumbled me on that one, but you can't send me back now because the UK cares about human rights, and I'm going to be persecuted because I'm gay. So they are um, being schooled. Sorry to interrupt. I just think that's an important point, right? So, so they are being mm -hmm. schooled by you know, the NGOs and, the, and the, the refugees charities that are over there, they're saying, right, you know, when you get to Britain, you say yeah. this and they'll let you stay. Yeah, yeah. They, right. they prepare, they, they, they tell them how to fill in paperwork, what to say. Every, they're fully briefed up on what to do when they get there. And, and these are active. We met them. No Borders was the biggest one we came across who were just so overt about their actions and their, what their purpose was. There should be no borders. Everyone should be able to go where they want, and we will help them do that. NGOs like No Borders is primarily funded by the World Economic Forum, and the World Economic Forum's main goal is flooding every westernized country with illegal asylum seekers. And these NGOs are operating right here on the Mexican-United States border 
full time, all the time. These are American citizens out here that are paid by whomever. Nick Shirley and his mother have been doing incredible work down there. And here's what he caught. So there's legit three groups we got. So people from Asia, South America, and now I don't know where these people are from. However, everyone is covering up their faces because some NGO that is here right now told them not to speak to me. A little weird. Speak English? All of the migrants covered their faces and some even put their hands up to try and block my camera. And some even demanded for me to stop filming. So nobody wanted to speak right now. Somebody told them, the lady here, told them not to speak to anybody and this, she's in the car and she looks happy as can be as she's protecting the people that came in this country illegally. She's got a big old smirk on her face. We're gonna go talk to her. How's it going? Who do you guys work with? Why so? I just don't really want to talk to you guys, that's all. And why? We're just trying to understand what's going on. So do you guys work with an NGO? Do you guys are just coming out here to help people? Just, you know, helping humans. How long have you guys been coming out here for? I mean, I've been out here for about like seven, eight months now. Really? Yeah, that's why I've seen you before though. And have you seen like a big shift on what's happening with the migrants? Because before they were going over to Tacoma, now they're coming over here. Um, I mean, they're coming all over around the southern border. Mm-hmm. Cool. And does this guy work with you? Yeah, he's my friend. Oh, cool. Are you guys working on a documentary? And what's the camera for? If you don't mind me asking. He just wants to film. Cool. I mean, same thing with you guys. You know? Yeah. He's got a little bit more fancy of a setup. Yeah, he's got a bit more of a fancy of a setup. Plus you got your microphone and everything, you know? Mm hmm. Okay. And uh, so, like, since you've been coming out here for seven months um, and it's probably been treating like a job, do you get paid to come out here and do this? No, I'm just a person that wants to help people. Really? For like, sure. do you believe it's right for these I mean, people to I be coming really, over? Like, and then, do you know, like, like I said, I don't really care to like engage with you guys. So once these people cross the border and they are here, and then do you know what happens to their lives after they cross the border? Like what you're helping facilitate? I mean, I don't really understand why this question is being asked. No, these people are, you know, going to their families, their friends here in America. Like, that's the most that I know and the most that I need to know. Mm -hmm. I don't really ask much beyond it besides obviously this isn't cool. No one should be stuck in this heat without food, water. Thankfully, there's some tarps, you know, they've been put up in a porta potty. Does it worry you that potentially bad people be, could be coming over no, and that we're. None of these people are bad. Really? You don't think a single person of these people? I've never had a bad experience with a migrant. And it seemed like every time we asked another question, she got more and more worried. And then I eventually wanted to ask her cameraman some questions because he was All filming right. me. All right, so this guy right here, he's filming me. I'm trying to ask him a few questions about what he's doing. So, where does. Where's this film gonna go? I kept asking this guy questions as he videotaped he me and my mother, out. and as I asked him questions, he would not answer anything, and meanwhile, Border Patrol uh, showed why up. Why won't you respond to any questions? The lady over there, she gave me very bad vibes, very bad vibes, not gonna lie. She wasn't speaking to me, she wasn't giving me any responses. She's protecting yeah, these people that are coming over here illegally. All right, they're taking care of the woman first. We got the Border Patrol coming through. Yeah, they're putting the luggage right up front. Just like a first class service here, valet service here at this encampment here in the middle of California. So there you have it. You've got an American kid with his mother out there trying to expose all this stuff that the mainstream's not talking about and the government's ignoring. And then you have American citizens out there that are helping these people that are illegally coming into the country. So this is the same type of person that would probably allow a burglar to come in their house because it's cold out. You know what I'm saying? It's amazing. And I mean, I videotaped this myself when I was down in Texas this time last year or back in January of 2024, I should say. This is insane. But it gets worse. It gets worse. Border Patrol treats these people like, uh, you know, like he said, first class, first class passengers on an airplane. They pick them up and then they bring them to a bus. They get on the bus. They're given a cell phone. They're given a backpack. They're given a prepaid credit card. And then they're shipped off to some lucky contestant, usually New York City or perhaps Chicago or anywhere else where Americans are already dealing with Americans being homeless. Now there's a massive influx of people that don't belong there, most of them being military age men and a good majority of them being straight out of prisons from other countries. This is ridiculous. And if I know this, and if you know this, you know the government and officials know this, but they're allowing it to happen. Why is that? Why is that? And for all those that think this girl's doing a good thing because she's helping humans, she's been out in the desert at the border crossings for seven or eight months, and yet she lives in California that has a ridiculously high rate of homeless people. You can't go down any street in California without seeing people camped on the side of the road. 
It's unbelievable. I've seen it with my own eyes. So she could help people all she wanted. What she's doing is making the problem that much worse. But that's their logic. That's how, quote unquote, these people think. Majority of the migrants up and we went to find where the migrants were coming in at and we met a lady whose backyard is literally the border and she shares some extremely shocking and scary information about the current crisis especially with the Chinese migrants. So is every single day are there migrants coming through your yard? Every day. About 3 a.m. every single night they come down that hill all the way around. They, they go through our property and then they come right here. The other night they started a fire right there and then they yelled at our window, hello, hello, till they woke us, make sure they wake us up. Really, and are they expecting you guys to help them yeah, when they cross over? Yeah, they want us to help them. They don't, and then when we tell them to go up the road, the best we can, they don't believe us, so they'll go for a little ways, they'll turn around and come back. So this goes on all night. So actually, I am so tired. Every night, they're a nuisance, and the Border Patrol is not stopping them. They're actually, if we say anything, like, you can't come to these, this area, we can get in trouble. They have even told us they would arrest us if we hindered these migrants. If we showed them any guns, which we don't do that because they're just people, that they would confiscate our guns. They would take, uh, take our property. They have been really, they have harassed us and not the migrants. The migrants come through here and they have come through and flipping us off and taking pictures and what have you. Or, Tried to, get, or even asked me if they could have my password so they could get on the internet. Really? Yeah. They even asked for your Wi-Fi. Yeah. And does the government do anything to protect you guys, or does it sound like they're protecting the migrants more than anything? Oh, they're protecting the migrants. They don't help us at all. They've told us that they will arrest us, and if we try to help the migrants, which we, I mean, sometimes you feel sorry for them. They got little bitty kids, a lot of, a lot of children, and you know, one day it was super hot out here, and so we gave them a little ride up the road. And they told us if we if we did that again, they would arrest us. Really? So we can't help them, but we can't send them back either. Our hands are tied. The Border Patrol's hands are tied. So do you think the Border Patrol's getting their orders from above? Because if Absolutely. They took an oath to protect and serve. Mm -hmm. They're not doing that. They're not doing their job. They're doing somebody else's bidding. And that's what I've been saying all along. They're absolutely doing someone else's bidding. Our own government has completely turned on us and people need to understand protecting their job means nothing when the country is gone. It's happening right now. Why would the government give illegals more rights on your property than you have? It's completely and utterly unconstitutional, but nobody seems to even know what the Constitution is anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? When you've got American citizens sitting out in the desert helping illegals come in and they don't ask any questions, that's a huge problem, and those people are traitors. But, but let's see what the main goal of the United States Senate is right now during this crisis, shall we? Unfortunately, that's not what the Senate's working on. They're not focused on policy changes. They're focused on funding to effectively get more illegal people here faster. Yeah, I mean, even one of the writers of the legislation, Senator uh, James Lankford, said he's a no. He's, he's not going to vote for this bill at this point. But I want to get your take on who specifically, whether it's the government or the administration, who specifically is working on uh, probing all of these military-aged men who are coming into the country. Do you have any idea who's actually looking at how many people who are military-aged men who are coming into the country, whether it's the Chinese nationals or Jordanians or anybody else? Yesterday, Bill Malusian ran into one citizen who, who started collecting all of the passports that the illegals are dropping on the floor. They don't want to have ID on them when they get apprehended. So they drop their passports on the floor in California and Texas. And this one resident's picking them all up. And he's got a pretty clear idea of who's coming into the country. Watch this. They're just dropping this stuff on the ground to come here and assume a new identity. So that's a little bit scary from with my military background and seeing the people that are coming across that male, 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 these are all military age males. People keep saying that. I've got the proof right here. You'd think some sort of a governmental agency would have all the passports, but of course it's left up to a citizen because the government, like the fella just said, the Senate is more concerned about getting as many illegals into the country as quickly as possible. That doesn't even make any sense unless what I'm telling you right now is right. These aren't here for votes. 
okay? These guys figured out a long time ago how to completely rig an election, period, okay? That's how Joe Biden ended up in office. That's, that's an easy one. These guys are soldiers. That's why they're, the law doesn't apply to them. Everybody covers up for them, and the media doesn't report on it whatsoever at all, except for Fox, and it's very limited, apparently. But in other countries, the exact same thing's happening, and people are getting arrested over there for posting on social media that their country is getting flooded or their neighbor's getting raped or somebody's getting stabbed. They're going to jail, and the perpetrator... No big deal, but we'll get to that. Let's stick with America for now. In America, we have senators. We have our entire government that's paid for by some company that has no interest in America being or not being, period. But some senators have actually, this shows you how much power these people actually have on their own. Some senators have actually tried to uncover exactly what I'm showing you, and this has been the result. So after the video this week showing migrants sleeping in the Boston's Logan Airport, one Georgia state senator captures new video showing migrants inside a hidden room at the Atlanta airport. Watch. Yeah. Transporting anybody anywhere? Yeah, we're all getting in place to, to where they need to be. Yeah, so these are just uh, do- recently documented travelers getting released from ICE, getting to where they need to be. Yeah, just let me, let me get a video if you don't. Yeah. Uh, actually, you cannot get a video. No. no. You cannot get a video. No, you're not allowed. You're not allowed. No. You're done. Did you hear the documented travelers? Joining us right now, Georgia State Senator Colton Moore. So I'm confused because I'm going to read this statement later on in, in the segment. But the person that you were speaking to said that they were documented, and we know that they were illegal, right? Yeah, we, um, you know, we got a whistleblower uh, who gave us a tip about this hidden room, and uh, I had a full team there with uh, some different cameras in different places. Said on Monday and Tuesday nights, there's just an influx of these people who come through the airport, kind of when the uh, the traffic is much lower at the airport. Uh, they were in a hidden room. I was talking to an Atlanta Police Department investigator yesterday. There are absolutely no cameras in this area of the airport. Um, if you watch another part of the video, you'll see that there's some barricades and some caution tape before you get there. It kind of looks like a con- construction zone, if you will. So can you explain to me, because, you know, airport's supposed to be one of the most secure locations. There's cameras everywhere. Is this inside of the terminals or outside of the terminals? This is, uh, I believe it's technically the third floor, but it appears as if it's the second floor in the domestic terminal. Uh, Our whistleblower says they walk right out of the gates and then they're escorted into this room. Those people in that room, though, they were waiting to be booked to flights all across the United States. Uh, We were also getting video of migrants who were just walking out onto the streets of Atlanta. And who's guarding the door? So there was a U.S. Army soldier there at the door, the guy who says, you're done. Uh, he is a United States soldier. Uh, we we still not sure exactly what his role was there, uh, but he was sitting right next to the door and uh, basically assaulted me in order to take the phone and try, you know, to get rid of the footage. Uh, I was able to recover the phone, and, and that's the footage you see there. This is crazy. What's going on here? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of questions to be answered. I hope the Georgia Senate will flex its subpoena authority and uh, start bringing some folks from the airport in and getting answers to these questions. Have you yet uh, been able to get in contact with Governor Kemp about this? I can't. Im- I can just imagine that he's not too happy about what's going on. I-, I think this is the largest airport in the nation. Yeah, it is. It's the busiest airport in the world. Um, the Governor Kemp and I are at a lot of odds uh, on this issue uh, with with, uh, with the Fonnie Willis issue in Georgia. We haven't spoken. I know people in my district have sent him text messages. Uh, he's kind of passed the buck and said this is a federal issue. Uh, I certainly wish we were sending state resources down to the southwest border like Governor Ron DeSantis is. What do you want to see done right now when it comes to this airport? I want to see these people not be able to leave the airport. Uh, You know, the city of Atlanta controls the Atlanta airport. Uh, They ought to be housing these people here until we can figure out uh, things going forward. Well, Senator, the governor comes on our show. We we hope that he'll come back and tell us exactly what he knows about this as well. Uh, I just want to read this statement uh, from Atlanta International Airport. This is what they said. ATL works with Libertad. Uh, volunteers to provide assistance to immigrants during their travel. Immigrants, I thought they were documented. Team Libertad is a nonprofit that has worked at ATL since 2020, and there are no military 
or other law enforcement agencies involved in this effort. Immigrants are never housed in the airport. Uh, State Senator, we're going to follow this. We appreciate you coming on this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. Some shady business going on. We'll get to the bottom of it. Thanks, Senator. So this guy is a senator in Georgia investigating something at a Georgia airport that should not be happening. And first, he's put in check by some limp dick liberal NGO lady. And then he's actually physically assaulted by a United States soldier, a U.S. Army soldier. And they claim none of that happened. None of that was there, even though he's got it all on videotape. I mean, what are we doing here? What are we doing? They're sneaking these people into airports and then redistributing them all over the country. And they're lying to political entities that maybe aren't in on the game. You see what I'm saying? Because certainly a lot of them are. Not every single politician is crooked. But every single politician that is legit has no juice, has no power, and isn't in on the joke. So they still think somehow voting, your constitutional right, will fix this even though the woman in the desert just showed the Constitution doesn't mean shit because the government, the Border Patrol, everybody else is protecting the people that don't belong here. And if you try to protect yourself against the people that don't belong here, you go to jail or your guns get confiscated. This is real. This is happening. This isn't a joke. This isn't fear porn. And if you don't want to admit this to yourself and decide, you know what, it's time we as Americans start doing something because... The governmental officials we put in place aren't, and they won't, and it's not going to change, and voting's not going to change because it's bigger than the United States. Donald Trump is just a chess piece on the board to keep people placated, and I predicted he would get someone would shoot at him before the election, and I'm predicting it again because they need all-out chaos before the elections. How do I know that? Well, because I predicted it, then turns out, So didn't the guys from the World Economic Forum. Isn't that strange? So just the other day, Klaus Schwab, or Dr. Evil, decided to drop this. More global risks to look out for in the post-pandemic era. But he he did a speech, and I can't find it. But what he basically said is something terrible, or four terrible things, are probably going to happen before the presidential election in the United States. Now... When you run things from the background, you can make those things happen. Power disperses in a post-superpower era. Post-superpower. Keep that in mind because we are the superpower. But they're going to get rid of that. And, And they are, actually. A big election won't stop our recurrent crisis of political legitimacy, whatever mumbo jumbo that means. And basically, it's a thinly veiled threat. A more complex global mental health crisis. It's amazing because everyone that was born in my era still pretty much has most of their wits about them. It's the kids that are going through college right now. The more expensive the college, the more mentally disabled they are. I've never heard the word mental health so much in my entire life until the last 10 or 15 years. You see what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. And I can't help but notice the irony in the people that are banding about the label mental health disorders onto other people are the ones that actually should be wearing that tag themselves. But that somehow just goes right over their heads. I just thought I'd throw that in there. While I was editing this, another YouTuber called Tyler Oliveira managed to make it out to the apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado, where Venezuelan gangs were recently filmed going door-to-door with automatic weapons, handguns, etc. So, let's see what he found out. Been terrorized. Gunshots, the trash piling up. Every time we try to go to bed at night, we have to keep it like this so nobody can kick in the door. Besides this incident caught on camera, is Aurora in flames right now? Have Venezuelan gangsters conquered the entire city? And are the Hell's Angels actually on their way to enact vigilante justice on this gang while the police sit by and do nothing? This Venezuelan gang has indeed taken over at least some of the buildings. You're saying at least two of the three. And what I just heard from you is you don't know how they ended up there. And you even made a suggestion that they could have been sent there. So Tyler went there and he spoke to a lot of the people that lived in this complex. But oddly enough, most of the people he spoke to were Venezuelan and they had no comment. They simply said that they go to work every day and they come home and go to sleep early so they don't see anything. 
That's exactly how it was when I was locked up. You don't rat on anybody because the repercussions will be swift and severe at any rate. Aurora is contradicting itself on the extent of Venezuelan gang activity in that city. The mayor told Fox News this week the gang is collecting rent at a troubled apartment complex. The interim police chief in a video press release says that's not happening. So as you can see, the powers that be are trying to control the narrative. It seems like some mainstream outlets are trying to get the information out and some legitimate public officials are trying to get the information out. That's obvious. These gangs are flooding cities, trying to take over. Crime is going through the roof. Bullets are flying and the government's facilitating all of this. They, they continue. The only thing they're worried about is getting more illegals into the country as fast as possible. Why would they be doing that? That doesn't make any sense, except they're looking to take America down. They already flooded our country with oxycodones. They already flooded the place with drugs. And now they're flooding the place with illegals and raising taxes, inflation, etc. America is in her death throes right now. And they're trying to make it as last minute, you know, as far as people waking up as humanly possible. And it appears they're doing a phenomenal job at that because most people are walking around right now like all is well. In the United States, it is cheaper, $3 per hit, to get fentanyl, enough to kill a human being. It's cheaper to buy fentanyl than it is to buy a gallon of gas in the United States currently or to buy a gallon of milk. We invaded Iraq and took over all of their oil production and suddenly our gas prices quadrupled and Americans just kept cheering USA, USA. And instead of making it more difficult for farmers to provide food to Americans, they do the exact opposite. But somehow fentanyl, Oxycontin, heroin, cocaine just continue to flood into the country completely and totally unabated. And the reason being is there's too much money to be made for a politician to stop it. Take a look at how much a politician is worth when he goes into office as opposed to when he comes out of office. That should be pretty eye-opening and self-explanatory. But on that, I'll digress. Back to Tyler's video. True that gangs have taken over this apartment complex or no? Tren de Aragua? No sé, hermano. Okay, no okay. Sé. Es peligrosa aquí o no? Sí. 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 ¿Por qué? Like, pop, pop, pop. Sí. Mucho okay. plomo, sí, pero no, o sea, no. Puedo, Criminales. No puedo hablar más de lo que puedo decir porque también es mi seguridad es mi. Okay. Cuéntame mi para ti. Hola. ¿Tren de Aragua aquí o no? Mucha. Peligrosa. Okay. Bien. Tren de Aragua is here, he said. I said dangerous. He said no. Fuck and find out. Oh, great. This is not a good sign. We got large piles of uncollected trash here. Normal, standard. We got the van normal. I'm pretty sure this means stop the violence or something. Is it safe out here? Okay. Yeah. Um, no. no. Okay, be safe. The cops. cops are out here often? Yeah. Lots of shootings? Last shootings last night. All right. So there you go. He got as much information as he possibly could, but he was asking the people that were literally from Venezuela, and certainly they're not going to rat on these people because when nightfall comes, the bullets start flying. But this is in, in totally insane, and there is only one. How do you think that the elected officials don't know what's going on when I know what's going on, when Tyler knows what's going on, when you know what's going on? And their only priority is to get as many immigrants into the country as they possibly can as quickly as they possibly can that's the united states senate's priority apparently for what reason for what end i'll leave links for tyler's video so you can watch the entire thing in its entirety but i pretty much showed you all the good stuff out of the video but here's the thing none of this is a surprise the mainstream everybody was talking about this exact gang by name for quite a while this isn't new Members of a violent Venezuelan gang have made their way into the U.S. and here to Chicago. Authorities confirmed to NBC News that they are investigating more than 100 criminal cases connected to suspected gang members. NBC 5's V. Wynn talked to people concerned about the impact on the city and risks for vulnerable new asylum seekers. Not only is the Little Village Community Council working to provide assistance for new arrivals, but also educating them on the inner workings of the city. The city of Chicago is one of the most segregated cities and also neighborhoods that they might 
think they're safe, but they're really not. The director here says they've been holding workshops on a rolling basis, letting new asylum seekers know about the different gangs and their culture. What colors not to wear? The, when you wear a hat, you tilt it to the right, to the left. Um, that could cost you your life. They've also been fielding questions about the emergence of Tren de Aragua. It's the largest criminal organization in Venezuela with more than 5,000 members. We have been told that certain uh, of the members of Tren de Aragua have done certain crimes in the neighborhood, but we can't say if, if it's really them. This comes as local law enforcement officials told NBC News the gang is believed to be linked to criminal cases in five states, including Illinois and Indiana. NBC5 confirmed at least two members have been arrested here in Cook County for narcotics and weapons-related charges. Edwin Cameo was accused of selling cocaine to an undercover officer several times. Court records show as of February, his case was closed. Okay, the case was closed even though he was caught red-handed being an illegal in the United States selling cocaine numerous times to an undercover cop in Chicago and his case was closed. Well, that's queer because if I did that, the first time I sold to an undercover, I'd be in jail and I'd still be in jail. But apparently if you don't belong here, the rules don't apply. You, the rules just do not apply. It's pretty pathetic that the guy that's talking about the Venezuelan gangs in Chicago is telling him we're teaching all the new quote unquote asylum seekers all the gang culture so they don't accidentally get into some sort of an issue. Let me tell you a little secret. In a real world where the gang culture in Chicago and other countries and cities in the United States is so bad, people that show up there need to be briefed on it. Why in the world would the Senate be worrying about how quickly they can get more asylum seekers into the United States? because they're tearing it down from the inside. Every other country is getting their ass handed to them right now by asylum-seeking Islamics that are taking over their entire communities, and if the citizens stand up for themselves, they go to jail, and the, Isl and the Islamics do not. But in America, people are armed, so they're going about it a different way. They're tearing it down from the inside, and in the last couple of months, it's really started to show itself, and it's going to ramp up even more. This is going to get blinding. This may be the last warning you ever have. And I know some people are shaking their heads thinking, when Trump gets in, he'll fix all this. You can't fix all this. There's no way to fix all this. The tree of liberty needs to be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots, period. Guess what? From time to time is here. For years and years, Hollywood politicians and the mainstream media tried to convince Americans that the racial tension between black Americans and white Americans was at a boiling point and there was going to be civil war at any moment. And yet that never actually happened, no matter how far they let it go. It's funny that during the lockdowns, during the pandemics, the only people that were completely and totally, no pun intended, immune to this were the people that were rioting. They allowed the rioters to do basically whatever they wanted because they were looking for an end result. And sadly... When people looked at each other, they discovered we're not actually racist. This is all just made up. Seriously. Sure, there's some people that treat other people bad, but that happens in every single walk of life. You see what I'm saying? I grew up and two of my best friends, one was named Pooper Anderson. Yeah, Pooper. And Laron Van Alstyne. Guess what? They weren't white boys, but it didn't matter. People are people. It is what it is. So these guys decided, let's go to the next level. Let's invite all sorts of people from other countries fresh out of prison who cares into the country and see what happens and now they're getting the result that they want because when we live in a day and age when the so-called quote-unquote outlaw motorcycle club the hell's angels is rumored to be on their way to colorado to deal with these venezuelan gangs yeah we're officially living in a cartoon before i move on to the problems other countries are having with their flood of immigrants let me just wrap it up on America by saying this. Somebody is facilitating this. This isn't organic. Somebody is paying these people, paving the way, giving them first-class treatment, allowing them to live rent-free, allowing them to drive with no documentation whatsoever at all, and allowing them to commit crime after crime after crime only to be completely released. Yeah. I hate to break it to you, but this is a plan, and the end result is the absolute decimation of everything we've ever known, going back to a one-world government 
digital money and 1984, basically. So the Border Patrol is just following orders by saying that. Absolutely. And it's the people up top that are saying, hey, well, has to protect be. the migrants. And these people come through with, they've offered us money, and they've got wads of American money in their wallets. Really, the migrants? The migrants. American dollars. We have found um, foreign money all over the property, uh, from Turkey, Vietnam, uh, all over the world. But how they leave China, because a lot of them are Chinese the last few days, how can... Hundreds and hundreds of them leave China. It's a communist country. Their people don't just get visas like Americans do, like Americans go wherever they want to. That, that doesn't happen in other countries. In other countries, they are stopped. They've got to have a reason for leaving the country. They don't just get, they've got to be coming over in a plane because they're not walking here. Over 100 students in a district outside of Boston will have to find a new way to get to school in September. They won't have bus service due to a shortage. This comes as the state started paying for buses for migrant students who families recently moved into their community. These are all migrant children. And from what I understand as well, that um, actually th th there's bus service set up for these illegal immigrants. So you're losing bus service. They're gaining bus service. Yep. And Stoughton says that it's government agencies paying for these extra buses for the outside families. So here's the synopsis of this entire situation in the U.S. As long as you don't belong here and you're a quote-unquote asylum seeker, you can attack, rape, kill, deal drugs, and you'll be released. No problem. If you're an American and you have children, chances are those children will probably lose their ability to get to school on a school bus because migrants need it more. That's happening. If you're a quote-unquote asylum seeker in the United States, you can commit crimes caught on video and local authorities, even the governors, will simply deny what, what everyone else can see with their own eyes to the point where alleged quote-unquote outlaw motorcycle gangs are our only and last resort. I mean, this is absolutely insane. This is absolutely insane, but this is how you do it. They're literally taking the United States down from the inside out let alone the national debt, which is absolutely skyrocketing as I speak. In this sentence alone right here, the national debt has gone up $1 million. Yeah, America is going down, and apparently everybody's just waiting to vote on the next person to somehow stop all of this. And I got to tell you this, with all the love I possibly can, it's not going to happen. This ship is too big and it can't be turned around now. And when tyranny becomes law, lawlessness becomes duty. Rebellion becomes duty. Do you see what I'm saying? I find it really strange in a land of people always showing off their Cerakoted AR-15s, etc. so forth. The public and the people of Colorado are hanging their hats on the fact or the rumor that an outlaw motorcycle gang is going to come and save them because apparently the authorities and the police can't. Somebody's hands are tied. That's where we live right now. And it's not going to get any better. You've been warned. And while I was editing this video, this update right here came to light. So here you go. So there's a lot of rumors going around right now that the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club has made a statement and they're heading directly to Aurora, Colorado right now to confront these Venezuelan gangs that are taking over apartment buildings, extorting people, shooting people and causing all sorts of ruckus in a town that was already, you know, gripped by shootings, drug activity, gang activity, things of that nature. So growing up in Lynn, Massachusetts, I grew up around many, many motorcycle enthusiasts, we'll call them. And when I saw this story and I saw this video today by J.D. Lang or something to that effect, this guy. I'm sorry, his name is J.D. DeLay, and he claimed that he talked to some of his contacts and he said, yes, in fact, this is coming. There's going to be an, uh, an apocalyptic clash of uh, gangs, apparently. And I didn't really, you know... From what I grew up and what I know, this didn't make any sense to me. So I reached out to a couple of people that I know that would know 100%. And they referred me to this statement put out by a guy named Scotty Grow. And he is a 
official, non-official spokesperson for the club. And this is what he put out. The statement goes, a social media rumor claiming the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club is headed to Aurora, Colorado to violently confront Venezuelan immigrants has gone viral. Most of these posts regurgitate this lie and attempt to validate it with a video of motorcycles riding in an organized pack. The HAMC strongly denies the foundation and validity of these absolutely ridiculous and false claims. The Hells Angels do not involve themselves in political issues outside of motorcycling and take no stance on the issue of immigration or the presidential election. It goes on to say the HMAC is a motorcycle club concerned only with motorcycle enthusiasm and benefiting the communities the club resides in. A A video of motorcycles riding in a pack provides no proof of this false rumor. Motorcycle clubs ride in packs every day in every corner of America, and that is a fact. There is nothing unique about such imagery. Social media rumors like this only serve to perpetuate a false and irresponsible narrative about the HAMC for the sole purpose of driving traffic and clicks. These rumors also have the potential of causing real harm to real people. The HAMC has been the target of law enforcement profiling and discrimination from coast to coast, even elevating to the level of law enforcement threatening the lives of members simply based on a stereotype. The HMAC requests that any social or media outlet that has reported this false rumor responsibly release a retraction and cease and desist, perpetuating potentially dangerous lies. Respectfully, the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. And if you don't know, the club's logo is trademarked, so don't use it. That is from the horse's mouth. So for everyone claiming that the Hells Angels predominantly a bunch of white guys, allegedly in some sort of a gang, going to another state to confront a gang is stupid. And if anybody was ever going to do something like that, they certainly wouldn't make it obvious so law enforcement could set up on them. So for all those putting out videos, you may want to take them down because you're helping perpetuate a But in other countries... They're facing the same thing, except much worse, because unlike America, which has the right to bear arms, other countries do not, and they are paying the price really bad in the form of Islamic, quote-unquote, asylum seekers. You know the people that we have been bombing and killing for the last 20 years? Yeah, let's bring those people all over. What could possibly go wrong? Well, I'll show you. about all the migrants coming into Great Britain. I'm not racist at all, yeah? I don't mind them coming into the country and stuff like that. What I do mind is they're coming from war-torn countries and stuff like that. They're causing significant criminal offences and the police are letting them get away with it. That is what makes me sickened. My granddad would turn in his grave at the moment. At the end of the day, I don't mind people coming to the country. Britain is a great country. Come to Britain, but flourish. Don't, don't exploit the system. Come here, be happy and everything. You don't have to exploit the system. Britain's a great country. Britain is broken. How can Britain get fixed? How can Britain get fixed? Get rid of our government. That's what it needs to do. Do you think migrants are going to continue coming in and tell the... Of course they are, because the government's going to keep allowing it until we have some sort of restrictions on our borders. And now we've got a Labour government. And unfortunately, the Labour government has opened the borders even more than the uh, Conservative Parliament. So unfortunately, there is going to be more immigrants coming over. And I understand why they're leaving their countries, their war-torn countries. But it's all males. It's a bit weird, isn't it? It's all males coming over. Males on the boats. It's not women, it's not children, it's just males. You guys have a rich history as far as World War One, World War Two, and the veterans that fought for your guys' land, and now you guys are being somewhat replaced by a lot of these migrants. A lot of these migrants are coming in, and people are saying they feel like they're being replaced, and the veterans that fought for you guys are on the streets while migrants get put up in hotels. How does that make you feel? Obviously, we're not happy about it. We've got nothing about migration. We're not against migration. We're about controlling our borders. If I was to go to another country, I would be vetted, and if I'd been in trouble before or had any past history, I wouldn't be allowed in. We're not about anti-immigration, we're about controlling the migration. And if we don't take control of the migration, we're going to be outnumbered in our own country. We will no longer be a Christian country, we'll be controlled by an Islamic movement. So it appears Great Britain is suffering from the same problem. Suddenly their government has turned against them and has opened the borders and is flooding the place with 
military age men. We're hearing this over and over and over in every country. That's really strange. What a coincidence. 29 million pounds spent on illegal immigrants in the last 18 months, all aged between 20 and 30, fighting age, no women, no children, put up in four or five star hotels, but yet there's veterans on our street, homeless, on the street. It's all wrong. It needs to be put right. Government needs to be out. So there's another strange coincidence. For some reason, the British government, exactly like the American government, has decided that their own citizens that may be down in their luck, homeless, etc., they're veterans. Yeah, they don't matter whatsoever at all. They can live in the streets and shut up. But these uh, these quote-unquote asylum seekers, they need to be put up in the best motels. Laws need to be changed to protect them so that when they break the law, it doesn't matter in any way whatsoever at all. They can drive without a license. They can do whatever they want. And if any citizens of any country point out these coincidences, they get arrested. And before anybody hits me with an Islamophobe tag, let's hear from an imam. Let's hear from their own words exactly how they see other religions and how they deal with other religions throughout time immemorial. Islam spread by the sword. Tell us it. So what? We gave them the choices between accepting Islam or paying taxation mm -hmm. or facing the possibility of going to war. Mm -hmm. But to say, no, 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 Islam was not spread by the sword, this is not true. What is meant by it is mentioned, which is to fight. Uh -huh. To fight the people until they accept the religion uh, or to pay taxation. Mm -hmm. and, and this is clearly mentioned in chapter 9. Okay. So you have to fight them until they give the taxation. In Islam, when we conquer a country mm. of course there's nothing peaceful about it mm -hmm. but look at the amount of muslims coming in to islam mm. they are in the thousands and the hundreds of thousands and the millions mm -hmm. so i would imagine that you would have millions of new people joining the muslim faith all the time because, like I said, for the last 20 years we have been bombing and killing Muslims in Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq. And then let's not forget that Israel has been literally killing people on the Gaza Strip for almost a straight year now and nobody stepped in, nothing stopped, etc. And my point is, they're very, very angry. So why not give them the keys to the back door and let them set the table for us and we'll all come home for dinner and it'll be terrific. Do you see what I'm saying? Maybe that wasn't a terrific analogy, but it's all I got. I don't use a script. Let's go to another country because there isn't very much footage on the UK riots because they deny they happened and anybody that tries to post anything that lives in Britain is now being locked up, hunted down and locked up while the people walking around on the mainstream news carrying swords and weapons and other things, <laughs> they're just looking for the far right. Anybody that points out that they're committing a crime is far right. That's where we live right now. And with all of this going on in Britain right now, you would think that the government officials would say, you know what, we need to secure our borders and deal with what we've got on our plate right now because what we're doing is not working whatsoever at all. Unless, of course, the goal is exactly what I'm telling you the goal is. To break the country down, turn everybody against each other, have everybody fighting, and they simply sit back and clean up the mess. Anybody that puts information out that doesn't go with their agenda, they simply censor and lock up. The police departments are spending more time hunting down people posting things on social media than people actually committing crimes all over the United Kingdom. And this isn't just in the UK. It takes a lot to piss off the Canadian people, but having... Uh, Muslims holding up traffic five times a day because they feel the need to show their dominance by blocking traffic and dropping in the street and praying when they can simply go to one of many mosques 
and pray. But that wouldn't show their numbers. That wouldn't show defiance. That wouldn't show the Christians, the Jews, or anyone else that might be of a different religion in Canada who the real boss is, who's in charge. And that makes no sense whatsoever at all, unless, of course, there's an agenda. You see what I'm saying? Are Canadians right to say that Canada is now broken? Or is this just another right-wing conspiracy theory? Could the leftist liberal narrative that Muslim immigration is helpful to Canada be misleading? I find it very disheartening how many channels cover these topics but never actually tell you what the quid pro quo is. They tell you about the problem, but they don't tell you about the solution or the actual agenda itself. Islam has made its case and stated its purpose numerous times, I don't know how many times, intermingling them with people that don't believe what they believe will not end well whatsoever at all. These are people that still think that if a woman shows her calf, she should have rocks thrown at her till she is dead. Now think about that. Having rocks thrown at you until you succumb and die. That is absolutely brutal. But that's what they believe. That's Sharia law. Head straight into our top story this morning. Clashes broke out at an anti-Islam rally in the Norwegian capital of Oslo, prompting authorities to end the event early on. We're going to take you back to Belfast now and our senior island correspondent, David Blevins. David. Yes, there is a significant security operation underway here in Belfast city centre because of counter demonstrations. If I just uh, turn the camera around the other way, we can show you that anti-immigration protesters wielding union flags and some posters that say they don't want to become second class citizens in their own country have turned up here to stage a small protest. Some of them are now sitting on the road, so bringing this area of Belfast to a complete standstill. Uh, they feel very strongly about immigration issues here and they've come to voice that but I would estimate that there are somewhere in the region of around a hundred of them and the reason I'm stressing that number is because I want you to compare that with what's happening just on the other side of the police line and if the camera just comes back this way with me. So maybe you're catching it or maybe you're not but there's a couple of coincidences going on here. It's very coincidental that all sorts of countries have suddenly opened their borders, period. No more immigration, just open borders, letting in all sorts of people. And as soon as they do that, all sorts of really crazy, violent crimes start occurring. And then the citizens of those countries start protesting and demanding answers. And those citizens are called right wing or they're labeled as criminals, while the actual criminals, you know, the migrants, just do whatever they want. It's just a strange, crazy coincidence. It's like all the countries are working as one against the people of those countries. It appears that the, the authorities, the governmental people, the elected officials suddenly own the countries and all the citizens are just tenants that have to do as they're told. What a strange thing. It sounds like a one world government, you know? What a weird, crazy, right wing conspiracy theory that is. But it doesn't end there. For someone with a really conspiratorial mind, they would think that things really ramped up to hyperspeed right after the pandemic. But I mean, that's just crazy right-wing talk, am I wrong? Denmark is one of the safest countries in the world, but these last months were remarkable. On July 24th, there was a shooting in central Copenhagen and a 16-year-old boy from Sweden was arrested. A week later, another person was shot, and again, the suspect was a teenager from Sweden. These kids are often recruited on Telegram with messages like these, which offer $48,000 for a job in Denmark. The next day in Copenhagen, there was an explosion. The day after, there was a double shooting. This was the third incident with Swedish criminals in one week. Regeringen ser på problemet med allra största allvar. The police set up security zones where they could stop and search people without probable cause. Copenhagen lies just a bridge away from Sweden, where gang-related crime has been spiraling out of control. This is blamed on the poor integration of immigrants, who disproportionately ended up in poor neighborhoods, where over the years, parallel societies emerged 
first and second generation immigrants are now nine times more dependent on government welfare and almost half of them is unemployed. Immigrants are often segregated in poor communities. In the most extreme cases, like the Stockholm suburb Rinkeby, nearly 90% of the population has an immigration background. This led to social exclusion and in turn to gang formation. <laughs> As gun violence was going down in other parts of the EU, in Sweden, it was going up. Are you seeing the uh, problem here? Are you seeing the coincidences that just keep on happening? And they think that politics will somehow fix it. Germany is still in shock after the knife attack in the western city of Solingen, where three people were killed and eight wounded on a Friday night. While families process the grief and horror, questions arise. Why is Germany subject to these types of attacks? The suspected perpetrator, with alleged links to ISIS, came from Syria, eluded the German authorities and committed murder. The result? Heated political debates about weapon laws, deportations and asylum. All this just days before crucial state elections. On To The Point, we ask, after the Solingen knife attack, should Germany change its migration policy? So all these places have the same thing in common. What they're doing is banning weapons that these people are using, which does absolutely zero, instead of simply stopping the immigration and making these people come through the actual immigration process as opposed to just completely open borders, which just wackily enough, all countries did the same exact thing at the same time and they're all having the exact same results. So you must get the gist of this by now. If you don't, you're a lost cause and part of the problem. Sorry to say it, but I'm going to because somebody has to. That's all there is to it. At any rate, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like, share and subscribe. Leave a comment below and I will try to return the favor. I can't go any further with this video even though I could because uploading it would be impossible. At any rate, I am out.